I used to have a friend when I was a... It wasn't a friend, it was a neighborhood. One of the young guys in the neighborhood our age. And I, he used to blink a lot like this. Like repeated blinking, like more than normal, you know? And I just said it to him. I said, man, you, you blink a lot. And I wasn't trying to put him down or nothing. I was like, you blink a lot, you know? Every time I see you, you're, you're doing that, you know, a lot. And he goes, really? No one told him that he was blinking a lot. I'm telling you, I saw it with my own eyes from week to week to month to month, because he's in the neighborhood. We're all hanging out the same park. We had a gibui. I would see him less and less blinking so much. And by the end of it, he was just blinking normal. Because someone told him, so he thought, I want to do something about that. He wasn't a put down. He wasn't teasing. Ha ha, you blink a lot or something. He's like, you blink a lot. I was like, yeah, you actually blink a lot. <laughs> so in the same way, I want to read you a scripture in Proverbs. It says this, do not cor correct a scoffer. Listen to that. A person that mocks. It's too proud. Lest he hate you, rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Are you a wise man? Or a wise woman. Do you understand what that means? Not just correct them. Just listen to how he said it. Correct a scoffer. And he will hate you. Don't, sorry, don't correct a scoffer. Correct. He uses the word correct. A scoffer. Let's hate you. Rebuke a wise man. That's even harsher. Hey, stop that. Da -da -da. And you're like, he, he will love you. So I want to aim in my life to be a wise man. Why? Because I'm always willing to learn, to be corrected. Now, absolutely, there's people that will try to correct you and tell you off about something about you, and it's not because they love you or care about you. Okay? So I'm not saying that everyone that brings up some fault in you is doing it from God's heart. Sometimes they just want to pick on you uh, for whatever the evil reason of their own heart and needing to change in their attitude. But sometimes it is right what they're doing. It is of God. It is the right heart. But there's the other side of things is receiving that correction in the right heart. Because the person can say it the right way, the right place, the right heart from God at the right time. Because you can say the right thing at the wrong time. But you say the right thing at the right time with the right heart and that person still doesn't accept it and will say you're judgmental. You don't, you know, whatever. They'll call you different names. Why? Because they will not receive it. They're not ready to receive any correction. Why? Because they are a scoffer. They are a proud person at that moment. It might be they're not a proud person always. At that time in their life, at that moment, they're just proud. So, so don't always think that, ah, oh, man, the way they reacted so badly when I said it to them, I shouldn't have said it. Maybe it wasn't of God. Maybe it was, and they just received it wrong. But then there's the other side. Maybe you shouldn't have. You understand? Maybe you said it wrong. Maybe you saw something, but you never were meant to say it. What were you meant to do? Maybe you meant to pray for them. In your secret place. In other words, don't go up there going, I want to pray for your bad attitude. <laughs> no, I don't, that won't work either. I'm saying, huh? You pray. And there's a peace that comes with what you're going to do. And always judge yourself. He asked, how do you know, just for the sake of the people watching, or that will watch this, how do you know when? There's a peace that comes with it. If you always check yourself, he says in the Bible, judge yourself lest you be judged. Judge yourself. The first thing you ask yourself is, why am I going to do this? And if it's not because you care about the person, it's not because of love and you want them to better themselves because you see so much more than what they're acting like, and that attitude is stuffing them up in their work. It's stuffing them up in with their relationship or their friends or whatever it is, right? You go, oh, I've got to tell him, man, for this sake. Because they can, he can become better at that because it's amazing. And that little thing that he does all the time or she does all the time is stuffing him up in some future thing that he might get. So let me talk to him. Hey. So, but you ask God, am I just meant to pray for him, Dad? Because if God allows you to see it, then you have to say, God, do you want me, do you want me to be the one who says it? Because maybe the way you speak, and you might not mean anything by it, but the way... Okay. Maybe you just are the wrong person for that character of person. Nothing wrong with you, but just you saying it may be the wrong character. So what God will do through your prayers will get someone else with a different character that will go in well with that person. You understand? Because you pray. You interceded on, your, on their behalf because you love them. Okay? So that's what you do. You ask God always and you judge yourself why. What's the motive of why you want to tell them? 
We've had too many people in, in my life experience, so many people I've seen stuff up things because they got this critical spirit. They, they got, I won't say spirit, they got this critical attitude where they just fault find. They want to find faults with everything and everyone. And it works because don't worry, mate, you spend some time with anybody, you will find some faults if you're looking for it. Because everyone's got faults. We're all getting there. So, but if you're looking for it, oh, you'll find it. The whole painting could be amazing. There could be a painting you're looking at and it's beautiful and that negative fault-finding person will look at it and go, yeah, but it's too much pink. It will look and, and comment on the negative instead of going, it's beautiful. You know, be bright with the pink, but it's beautiful. You know, very different the way you're looking at it. You get me? So just search, let God search your heart and judge yourself also and be honest. Why are you going to do what you're going to do? Why are you going to say what you're going to say? I've stuffed up many times and said, at the, especially in the beginning when I became a Christian, when I saw something wrong with somebody, especially, I won't say it like this, when I started wanting to be really serious, walking holy with God changed, I thought everybody must change in the same way, and that means I must make sure that they do. And, and when I told them, I was, hey, you got to stop being like that, man, and you, you got to stop, blah, blah, blah. and it was wrong. I was going overboard and hurting people because I wasn't giving them the grace and mercy and the timing God wanted to give just like He gave me. And not one time did God ever trick me that way. And I'm not saying you won't harshly tell someone, en tell someone enough. You've got to stop being like that, man. Enough. I've seen you over and over and I've told you, stop being like that. People have told you and you're still hurting people. You can't keep doing that. There could be a time where you're harsh, speaking harsh and strong because it is of God to do it. So I'm never telling you that it's always going to sound like this. Oh, brother, you must change it a little bit. Of it. It's not always like that. It's sometimes it's stern, sometimes it's gentle, sometimes it's whatever. Just make sure you check yourself so it's not coming out from your attitude to them, but it's literally filtered out of God's heart and love towards them. Remember, when I say God's love, do not make the mistake of thinking God's love means you speak like this. Because Jesus is love, correct? Did he always speak like this? Do you think when he was saying, you bunch of devils, he was saying, you bunch of devils? Devil's born. Was he doing that, you think? You whitewashed tombs full of dead man's bones. Do you think he was talking like that? No. But he was love. When he said it, it's full of love. Because he is love. So I'm saying, don't think when I say love, that there's this fluffiness about it. Love corrects. Love protects. But be careful that you don't do things out of God. Outside of what God is wanting you to do, personally. And, and one more thing that keeps coming to my head right now is, Remember this, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, not you. He convicts of sin. That's what it says, when He comes, He will convict the world of sin and of judgment. And it continues on and on and on. We sometimes make the mistake of trying to convict people. You can say something, but then you're expecting you change. I'm watching you to change. Who are you, they're God? If you're meant to be the messenger, be the messenger. That's it. Then don't look at them in judgment thinking that if I haven't changed quick enough after you said it, you must look at them in judgment. Because we do that too. You've got to be careful. If you're just the messenger, you're just the messenger. Most of the time, we're not meant to be the messenger. I'll go to this back so I can stay on track. Sometimes you see the fault because God wants you to just pray in private time for them in love to God so they may change. Sometimes you are to tell them, but at the God, God ordained time. I wrote some saying the truth can have two different responses from people. I wrote Peter and Paul, example, and actually Stephen as well. I'll give you an example of what I'm saying right now. In chapter 2 of Acts, Peter preaches about Jesus. And then when he says when they heard this, they were convicted in their hearts. And their response was, now listen, Peter is speaking the truth from God's heart at that moment. They heard that the listeners, the receiving people, are listening and they decided to respond like this. What shall I do? They wanted, they, they, there was humility in their hearts to receive the message and ask, what do we do? 
with what you just said. Now, what, what, I want this. What do I do? Repent, every one of you, and get baptized for the remission of your sins. And then you're going to receive the gift, the Holy Spirit, and he talks like that. Then you read more in the book of Acts. You keep going. And you see Paul, uh, before Paul, Stephen gets stoned to death. It's very famous that Stephen gets stoned to death. He's preaching, doing miracles, amazing miracles. He gets put in, a, in a, like a court to be judged by the priest and all this kind of stuff. And he says, when they looked at him, he looked like an angel to look at. And he starts speaking to them. If you read what Stephen was saying, there's nothing angelic about what he was saying. It is full on harsh, man. It's harsh. He's literally telling them off from God's heart. God's love coming out. But so much truth. It's like, bah, bah, bah. You're like, oh. What did they do to Stephen after they heard this? Did they go, whoa. It was all from God. All from God's heart, what he said. When they, he finished speaking, what did they do to Philip? We know in the Bible, they grabbed him to stone him. What was the problem? Was it Philip? No, it was the receivers. Receiving message again now to help them change. And they didn't like what they heard. So what do we do? Let's kill the messenger. Same with Paul. Later again, in the book of Acts. You know, Paul converts, becomes a Christian. He starts preaching like crazy, man. Bold warrior, that guy. And what happens? They, it says the same wording. And when they heard these sayings from Paul, he says they were convicted in their hearts. So they took him to stone him. They literally stoned him and left him for dead. And he gets back up from the dead. We don't know if he actually died. Some say he actually died. Some say that he was just so lifeless. They thought he died and walked off. But he was actually, he got back up. What's the point? The receivers were the problem. The re people receiving the message didn't like what they heard, so let's stone them. So you've got to be careful. When you're getting uh, corrected, learn to receive, okay? Learn to check your heart. Don't go in defense mode because you might miss something because God loves you and He prunes us, rebukes us, and when He rebukes us, it might not be a voice. He says, he rebukes and chastises those children that he loves. If you're not chastised and rebuked, then you're not treated like a bastard. It literally says that in the King James. Like a bastard, in other words, a person that doesn't have a father. So every father who loves their child will rebuke and chastise them. So God will chastise and rebuke us. Sometimes you're not going to hear a voice from heaven going, you should got to stop doing this. Maybe because we hardened our hearts and we've been so... Uh, Played by the enemy, hardened their hearts and started having this bad attitude which you didn't even consider. And in some friend or some brother or some sister, God will bring and say, Listen, man, I've just been feeling like you've been a bit like this. You've got to stop that. And God is chastising us, chastising us as a mess to a, man, a messenger, another brother, another sister. Learn to receive. But sometimes it's just people that want to put you down. You know, those who are told you fault, fault find. Also, most of the time, there's two different ones. One's just full of pride, and they think they're so highly more holy and righteous, they put people down. You just gotta be more like this, and you gotta be like that, you gotta be like this, mate. Get off your pedestal, mate. Or they are doing the same thing to themselves secretly. They fault find against themselves. They're always hard on themselves, they always put themselves down. So what do they do? They'll put you down too. They'll fall find on you too because they're so harsh on themselves. I feel very sorry for those ones. Very sorry. Because it's such a tormenting life. And you're always putting yourself down about everything. So you're so grumpy at yourself because you're always finding something wrong with you, agreeing with the devil. What are you doing? You're looking at everybody, also finding something wrong with everybody else. We're going to have communion today. And I'm saying this so we can all search ourselves. Or at least go, Lord, help me not miss a moment when you are going to chastise me, correct me, rebuke me, either yourself or through somebody, and it is truly you. Help me not harden my heart. Help me not deflect it and defend myself. We do that a lot as well. Listen to the most beautiful, loving being called God, our Father. Comes to Adam and Eve, and when he says to them, what have you done? They blame. 
They deflect and defend themselves. It was the woman, it was this and was that. I say this a lot. Look what, and we do as well. When you're not ready to humble yourself, and we're not ready to humble ourselves, that's what we do. Deflect and push. And it's, it's, uh... Or I've heard people do this. If you know them, like if it's your siblings, like your brothers or sisters, someone that re- you lived with, you might say to them, and you know, you've been great with them and they've been great with you and blah, 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 and they've been acting really bad towards your mom or someone like this. And you say, man, you always speak harshly to mom, you know, she's just been cooking and blah, blah, blah. And you just come and you just start being angry with the blah, blah, blah. And what about you? Remember when you used to blah, blah, blah? They bring like a past thing 10 years ago, five years ago, even six months ago, even a week ago. But you have not been like that for that long now, for two weeks, one month. But because they don't want to receive and humble themselves, it's good to just deflect. But you also were like this and you did that. And Okay, what do, what's this got to do with anything, man? I'm like, okay. You've got to be careful when we're deflecting like this. And you've got to be careful when you're the one uh, bringing up the problem. It could be maybe it's not meant to be you. Okay? Both things. Just check that out for us as well. Is that making sense? I'm jumping from my notes to outside just to start speaking. I get excited. Listen to this. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 6. It says this. Wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. I love that passage. I've loved it for years. And I've quoted it so many times. It's amazing what it says. In, in another version, it says faithful wounds from a friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. What is that saying? A friend will sometimes tell you things that will wound you. It'll make you, oh, can't believe you said that. But they love you. They're actually being a friend. And what they said, no one else would say. They, they, what others would say is like, no, he's not like that. They're giving you sweet kisses as an enemy. And what's that keeping you the same? But your friend will go, man, it's not right. Would you think like that? Or what you're saying there. And that wounds you, but gets you a little bit angry. But you're like, thanks, man. They're a good friend. One of the biggest downfalls in history from preachers that were very much moving in great power and influence in the Lord. They surrounded themselves with yes men, yes men. People that go, whatever that they said, hey, I think we did this. Yes, yes, that's good. Yes, whatever you said, preacher guy. Yeah. They never questioned them. Yes, yes men, yes men. Be careful you're not around yes men only, but have those friends that will tell you, hey man, you stink, man. Go put some deodorant. That's a good friend. I don't want to walk around stinking. I want someone to tell me to go put some deodorant. True. We would want that. Have that kind of friend around. Not in front of everyone. I wouldn't want that friend to go, hey man, you stink, man. I don't want that friend. I'd be like, oh, calm down, man. You should tell me in secret. I want that friend that if I'm having like a, you know, the sleep thing, hanging on my white, white dot there came from my eye that fell on my hair and I'm in front of everybody. I want my friend to go, hey, you got the very lay, Sean. <laughs> you got the sleep thing. Just can you your zip sometime. Get the zip. zip it's a good friend. Don't let me walk around. Why? Because you're doing for me as I would want someone to do for you. Do to others as you would want them to do for you. In saying that, this is why I'm against some of the ways we've been doing some things in the Christian circles where people that move in words of knowledge and the prophetic, they'll say things that are put downs in front of the whole church to someone they'll be like you i know you've been doubting a lot and you haven't been thinking about giving up on your marriage but god is saying don't do that because if you don't he will restore it and blah 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 and you you have greater years to come you just embarrassed everything about that guy you're thinking of leaving your marriage blah, blah, blah. Really? jesus would never do that how do we know when the woman that came to Jesus at the well, we follow Jesus. That's how we do things. We look at how he did it. When the woman who came to him at the well, a Samaritan woman, he's by himself with her. He didn't wait till his disciples come and then he makes a spectacle of it and gives her a word of knowledge. He says to her, go get your husband. She goes, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right. You've had five husbands and the one you're living with right now is not your husband. She's like, I perceive you're a prophet. He never said that to everybody right in front of everyone. He said that privately between him and herself, conversation. He didn't belittle her and put her down and shame her in front of everybody. 
So I'm just saying, anyway, just wanted to bring that out. Matthew 7, verse 1 to 5, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Judgment does not mean you say, hey man, uh, the person wanting to rape this woman, you don't say, oh, I don't want to judge you. You say, hey, I'm going to judge you. Get off her now. Don't touch that woman. You understand? It, judgment means not condemn someone. Can condemn someone is when you're saying that they're gone, they're, they're lost. There is no hope for them. When you speak words of them that they, they basically that they have no hope, this is condemnation judgment. And that's what we're never allowed to do because Jesus judged all the time and he said to follow him. In fact, he says, judge, judge righteous judgment. So what he doesn't want us to do is condemn. Where you tell someone off, but you leave them no room for hope to be changed. But you make them feel like you're gone. You'll never change. You're like, you're a failure. And husbands and wives have to be careful of how they talk to each other as well. Because they can speak some really disgusting stuff from the devil to each other. That would it speaks through condemnation and through the devil's accusations. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. That's very full on. Jesus says this. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove your speck from your eye and look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I love that passage. I, I reflect on it a lot. God brings it up to make sure when I want to bring something up uh, that I make sure that I have no speck there. <laughs> so sometimes it's the one, I said this before, doing the correct thing is at fault and sometimes it's the one receiving the truth with the wrong heart. That's it wrong. I saw this, this quote on Facebook repeated over and over some posts. It's not my post, it's not my comment that I saw posted and many people started posting it, but I loved what it said. It's so true. I thought, oh, I never thought about this before like that. It says like this, this is what the quote said on Facebook. Judas had the best pastor, the disciple, Jesus' disciple, Judas, had the best pastor, Jesus, the best leader, Jesus, the best teacher, Jesus, the best mentor, Jesus, the best advisor, Jesus, the best counselor, Jesus. Yet he still did what was wrong, didn't he? So it's not the problem with the pastor or the church sometimes. Sometimes it is, <laughs> sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's the person that needs to change. Uh, I, I said this a little bit, but as I close up, I'll say this before we do communion. Uh, just to say that I made sure I said everything. I found that those who have had bad attitude that don't want to change will always shift the blame on the one trying to help them by pointing out their faults. So the one trying to help them by pointing out their faults in love, they will shift the blame. This person has a bad attitude and doesn't want to change. Not just a bad attitude, they don't want to change. They're always going to shift the blame to something else, to you, on you, on someone else, on saying you're judgmental, you're being judgmental. I felt so judged by them. Why? Because they went, let's say, so many times I've seen Christians and I see the quotes on the Facebooks and stuff years ago and stuff as well, where this sleep there, living together as boyfriend, girlfriend, unmarried, Christians, and they've been Christians for years. We're not talking about just a boyfriend, girlfriend that just came to Jesus and they're learning how to transition to Christianity. No problem. You give mercy, you give grace and patience. But Christians that want to live with each other to test things out before they get married. 
And the pastor telling them, listen, uh, you know, you're, you shouldn't be living together with your boyfriend and blah, blah, blah. If you're not married, you know, this is years after. Oh, I felt so judged. I felt so judged by that church, by that pastor. Da, 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 da. Who was wrong there? You understand? So, and many times they'll go and they've come, you know, they'll, to me. Oh, I went to this church or whatever and they were just so judgmental and I just felt like not loved and appreciated. Not loved and appreciated there or welcomed or accepted meant this. you got to accept me and not tell me anything about my sin. I want to keep my sin. It's my problem. That is not love. Because if you die in your sin, you're going to go to hell. How can I just... Okay. Why? Because I want to just make sure everyone's happy and stays in the church. If we want... Uh, we want to be a people that in love we want to help the people come to the ways of the Lord it's not people say come Jesus loves you just the way you are no he doesn't he loves you but he wants to change the way you are if it doesn't align up with Jesus' ways that's true not what they say that quote that's famous You okay? <laughs> okay. Prison, yeah, we'll, we'll put more. It's 23, I see here. We'll change the next time. We're finished now. But next time we'll change it to more higher, like 48 degrees or something. Yeah, cooking. All right. I need to be careful, please. Actually, I'm going to just wait, wait. I'll come here to you. If you guys, Two people come and just start, one take the bread and one take the, the, next, sort of, the next tray. Give him the bread. Let me just hold it there. Don't touch the thing. Let me just pray. <clears throat> Lord, we just bless right now. And we thank you for this body. This is your body broken for us. We acknowledge that by faith. This is your blood and your covenant. And we acknowledge this. By faith, this is what it is by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. So they're going to share it to you guys, and don't take it yet. Let me take one, guys, first as well. We're going to have to come back here again, and just don't just leave the trace at the back somewhere. Right, guys? Thank you. While we wait for the communion to come to you. Don't take it. Just hold on to it. You got any questions, guys? Or anything about the topic? Don't change the topic. Like, uh, you know, Alexi said before, but how do you know when you're meant to say it or not meant to say it if you feel like someone's been doing wrong? That was a great question. So if you have a question to do this subject, um, ask it. Oh, we wait. That's a good question as well. So Casper said, how do, you, how do we become better at receiving the correction? Uh, I, I, I can answer that immediately, but I just want to open it up. How do you think it is? Yeah. Wait, wait uh, yeah? Yeah, good, good, good point. Yes, yes. I was just going to give a straight answer, but this is great uh, process. She said, uh, how do you, so the question was, how do you become better at receiving the correction? And she said, maybe it's taking more time uh, before you answer, before you respond to someone's correction. Actually think about it. I'll be honest with you something. Uh, there's times where I was corrected by somebody. It doesn't matter who it is. And I, I've been corrected by uh, or spoken into my life by young people to older people. They'll say something, I went, oh, yeah, you know. Those. And sometimes I didn't even know they're correcting me. But there was times where I was corrected, but um, at that moment, I wasn't receiving it. But within that hour or that day, I received it. I humbled myself by the night time. <laughs> you know, so... I will say this to you, if your response was bad, out of defense, you, sometimes 
uh, you just kind of reacted, responded quick, and it was too late because it was in a you were in a bad mood that moment. You don't want to hear it. You already were, you know, having a bad day or something. It happens. But kind of consider before you go to bed. Consider, hey, God, you know, Johnny said that or whoever said this to me. Is there any truth in that? I've been told. I've been. My wrong. God told me this quote one time. This this statement to me. He said. You can be so right, you're wrong, he said to me. And I'll never forget that. Because with that, he gave me the explanation that you could be right in what you've seen, but your heart is wrong when you're going to say it. You're not doing it because of love. So, in the same way, uh, receiving it. I could be, they could have said it wrong, and I was right that when they said what they said, they said it wrong. But what they said was true. So I, no matter what, just in case, they could be wrong, their correction to me. But they could be right. They just said it wrong. So no matter what, I always take it to God and say, was it true though, Lord? Did I? Do I? Am I like that? And I forgive that person for saying it the wrong way. In fact, a guy, when I was first became a Christian, it was like a year into it, I guess. No, maybe less. A guy... I go outside to have a cigarette. I'm addicted to cigarettes. I just smoke 50 cigarettes a day, if I, especially if I was DJing. Just smoking and smoking. I was addicted. So we're having Bible group. And I'll go, sorry guys, I'm just going to go outside. That meant I'm going to go have a cigarette. And I got used to it. And one day, this guy that spe- speaks so harshly, he's, he's very, I'm, I'm cool with people that are straight out. But he said, he will speak with a put down way. And I hate it just even sitting to talk to him because he might say something that because oh, I'm going to punch you because I'm just six months in the Lord and I'm going to still punch you. And he says to me, you know, God hates that you're smoking, you know. And the way he said it, I wanted to beat him up so badly because I was already beating up myself, feeling like, man, I'm a failure. I'm not doing anything right. I'm trying to change because I was really harsh on myself to try to get changed. But what he said was true. And so that time I wouldn't take it. But the point is, don't dismiss the word that's come out. Maybe the messenger was wrong, wrong timing, wrong everything. But what they said maybe was right. And you can say, God, I am smoking. Help me change. Help me not make excuses for the smoking. And uh, I want to give it up, God. Because it's, I'm your temple and I don't want to be having something that's killing me before my time or damaging my organs or whatever. You know, I don't know. You understand? So it doesn't change the word that was true. Okay, so now take a moment, guys, and consider the word we just heard. And if, if even the Holy Spirit brings up a correction that you got corrected with by somebody even a month ago, man, a year ago, he'll do things like this, where he gives you a flashback of something, and that was of God. That was God's correction, but it was the wrong method, the way he did it, although you received it wrong. And if you feel like you received the wrong, go, Lord, sorry. And no matter what, Just give over your heart to God back again and say, I don't want to receive correction wrong. I want to grow. Correct me. I want to be transformed. I don't want to be hard. And I don't want to also correct people because we're meant to correct and help people grow. But I don't want to do it in the wrong heart and the wrong motive. I want to know between the two and when I'm meant to and I'm not. Just give him all that back to him, okay? Because we don't want to stuff. We don't want to be the stumbling block to our brothers and sisters' growth, all right? Sorry, one last thing. In saying that, that has happened where we stumbled the growth of the person's speed of how fast they were going in their growing up in the Lord because we said something before it's season, before it's time for them to change. And that to them, that's like God speaking. Because if you say God hates smoking, that hardens your heart because you think, oh, you hate me even doing, I'm trying to stop. You know, you get, you get angry with God, not that person. So you've got to be careful um, because this can be really strong what we end up doing to somebody, okay, and their growth. So be careful, okay? So just take a moment and then we'll take communion together. God will also show some of you times where you were corrected in love by somebody that cared about you and they only did it because they cared about you and it was God's timing, but you were not ready to receive that. Not because you weren't ready, because you were too hardened in your heart to receive it. And the way you spoke back at that person hurt them. Because it made them feel like they did wrong, but they didn't. 
And maybe God will show you someone like this in your life and was in your life that you'll need to call and say, I'm sorry. That day when you said these words to me, I took them wrong and I reacted wrong against you to you. And I haven't spoken to you maybe even for a while. And I'm so sorry. It was my pride. I wasn't in a good place. And I just, you did the right thing at the right time and I was wrong. And it's beautiful to do this, okay? If that comes up by the Lord for you. 